Hi guys, yes, I know you're here mostly for the cloned uh, amplifiers and preamplifier reviews, but this one is jumping the line because I bought it like two months ago and it was patiently waiting in line to be reviewed. And in the meantime, I was using it uh, for the burning of uh, the amps that I've been reviewing. Uh, so it jumps the line because I have to decide whenever I'll be keeping this one uh, or selling it. And the same goes for uh, SMSL uh, DO200 uh, Pro that I was doing first view video um, a couple of weeks ago, weeks, weeks ago. So this is SMSL SU9 Ultra Digital to Analog Converter. Uh, why I got this one? Uh, I bought it uh, for three reasons. Uh, the first reason was uh, because I have a thing for Asahi Kasei uh, chipsets. I love the focals. Uh, the second reason was I got it on the Amazon flash sale and uh, it was like $250. So that's uh, twice uh, cheaper than the regular price. Uh, and uh, the third reason was in the past I had only good experiences with all uh, SML, SMSL digital to analog converters I bought. Uh, I liked all of them. Uh, I was uh, buying some other stuff too. Uh, so finally I sold all of my SMSL digital to analog converters. But every time I got one of them, I liked the sound quality and I liked the functionality of the device. So without, with, with that, uh, out of uh, the line, uh, the price and the links. Uh, the regular price for this digital to analog converter is in range of uh, 500 up to $550. Uh, as I said, I was able to get that one on Amazon uh, for $250. So that was very, very, very cheap. Uh, I'll post the links to the Amazon offer in the description of my video. Uh, there's a uh, uh, Amazon uh, Prime Day sale coming on the 8th and the 9th uh, of this month. Uh, so that's one of the reasons I'm jumping the line with this one. Uh, so if you like it, you'll be able to buy it cheaper than the regular price. I hope, uh, at least I hope it will be uh, one of the lists, one of the uh, products that uh, will be on the sale. Um, so now the specification. Uh, this digital to analog converter is based on Asahi Kasei 44999EX and AK91, sorry, 4191 uh, combo. Uh, it sports uh, also uh, latest and the best uh, XMOS XU316 uh, chipset for uh, USB uh, communication. Uh, it handles everything you throw at it. Uh, up to 768 kilohertz and DSD 512. So basically everything. Uh, yes, uh, it has uh, Bluetooth 5.0 version and it's uh, supporting codecs, uh, everything basically up to aptX uh, HD and LAAC. It also does MQE, uh, MQA, sorry, MQA. Uh, and it does MQA also for uh, CD drives. I haven't seen a uh, CD with MQA yet, but uh, this one is able to decode MQA from CDs too. From CDs too. It has some incredible um, specification numbers, uh, some incredible uh, THD uh, dynamic range and signal to noise ratio. Uh, so that was the fourth reason why I got this one. Uh, namely, it has dynamic range of 132 decibels. Uh, signals, signal to noise ratio is also 132 decibels. And uh, THG plus noise is 0.00006%. That's four zeros after the dot. And that translates into uh, minus 124 decibels uh, of uh, THD plus noise. Um, so so basically, uh, it's excellent. The, the numbers 
uh, indicate that this should be an excellent device. I'll add the link to the full specification of this digital to analog converter in the description of the video. And now I'll be uh, disabling the dimmer because it makes me angry. Yeah, like that. Okay, so now the build and the functionality. Let's start with the remote. It comes with a cheap plastic remote. Stay like that. Uh, it's cheap, it's plastic, and it works. So it does the thing it should be doing, and that's it. Uh, okay, now the functionality. Uh, we have a very nice, very vivid display in front of the device. The display is operated by the knob that doubles as a switch. When you press it and hold it for long, you'll be powering the device off. Or if you were in so many, you'd be getting back one level up. Uh, powering the device on requires pushing the knob. Uh, when you're on the main screen, the rotating the knob changes the volume level. Uh, it can be set to fixed by just setting the zero dB. Uh, what's interesting here, it can go above zero, which is basically up to 1.5 decibels. And this basically means that the uh, voltage on the outputs uh, will be a little higher uh, than the specification allows. Uh, for VXLRs, the regular maximum voltage would be uh, between minus 2 volts and plus 2 volts. And this one can go, as far as I remember, uh, between minus 5 and plus 5 volts. So that's additional perk that may work well with some of the amplifiers and may cause problem with others. So it's best to leave it at uh, zero. Although, uh, if your preamplifier or amplifier uh, can handle this uh, higher voltage, uh, it will give you uh, even better signal to noise ratios. Okay, so pressing the button once gets you into the menu. You can choose inputs, you can choose outputs. Um, the interesting thing here is that you can use all outputs at the same time, so you can uh, connect your amplifier and, for example, your power subwoofer at the same time. Okay, let's get back here. Uh, you can choose PCM filters, you can choose DSD filters. They are all uh, exactly as Asahi Kasei provides uh, with the chipset, so I won't be discussing them. Uh, when I was doing the uh, tests, the uh, sound quality test, I was using short sharp, which is the default value, and uh, to my ears it was sounding the best. Uh, okay, you can use some kind of uh, sound coloring presets. Uh, you cannot disable that one uh, completely, uh, but as far as I remember from the manual, the sound color option one uh, is just uh, flat, so it's not doing any uh, EQ. Okay. Uh, yes, you can select if it works with a volume control uh, or fixed volume level, and there's a third option uh, fixed for DSD bypass. Uh, so it means that uh, basically if you'll be uh, doing uh, DSD decoding, it will bypass all settings and it will not change the data stream. Uh, okay, we are here. Yes. We can select what uh, will be used, uh, um, what the function key on the remote will be used for. Uh, the default option is to select the outputs. Uh, you can change the face uh, on the XLR outputs. Uh, I've never seen a use for that uh, earlier in my life, but it's here. Uh, you can choose after uh, how many seconds the display will be switching off. Uh, and with setting this to off, the display will be live all the time. And you can change the brightness of the display. The rest is self-explaining. Uh, okay, 
So that's for the menu. And now let's talk about the build quality. <clears throat> it's very solid, very thick aluminium. It's actually one of the better SMSL builds. Volume and control knob display. Nothing on the sides, in the back. In the back we will have power socket connector, optical input, coaxial input, uh, two sets of outputs. XLR balanced outputs and uh, single-ended RCA line outputs and we have USB input. What we're missing here, ah yes, and of course the Bluetooth antenna. Uh, what we're missing here compared to other SMSL uh, digital to analog converters is a couple of things. The first one, the obvious one, is uh, we don't have uh, I squared S input here, only USB. And as you can see, USB is type C. Uh, USB input, so you won't be able to use your regular A to B USB audio file cables. Uh, but you can buy something like that. Let's show this to the camera, which is basically AT audio USB A to C cable. Uh, it's pretty thick, it's well shielded, and it works well. I will link to the cable in the description of the video, but you can also use your regular USB phone cable, although uh, probably it will be uh, better off getting something with better quality than the regular charging uh, phone USB cable. Yes, this time I won't be doing the internals video. Why? Because although it's very simple to, uh, simple to open the device, uh, the PCB inside is mounted underneath this uh, bottom plate and uh, in order to uh, disassemble it you need to unscrew everything here every single connector and port here in the back and you need to unscrew some additional screws on the PCB and then you have to handle the flat cables going towards display and the knob and there is a risk that uh, these would get damaged so um, so no inside look this time i was able to see the uh, power capacitor banks and some electrolytic capacitors on the board without removing it and uh, the both types are nichicons and uh, with uh, nichicon golds uh, being used uh, for signal path at least from what I saw there, and that's good. Uh, I wasn't able to see the capacitor on the power bank capacitors. Uh, I was able just to uh, see that they are rated for 50 volts, but that's not the most important thing. Okay, one more thing worth mentioning here is that, as you could see, it's using only three rubber legs. Uh, it's uh, important because uh, three rubber legs will make the device wobble when used with some harder uh, cables at the back. Uh, it's easy to solve, you just need to stick two rubber legs more here. These are cheap, available in any furniture store out, uh, so that's easy to fix. Okay. With all of these out of the way, we can move to the most important part of the video, that is the sound quality. So, starting with bass. Bass is very nice here, it fills the whole room, it has this nice low bass rumble. And it doesn't have any kind of mid-bass bleed. That's something that I always uh, look for, because uh, it can ruin the mid-range. And it doesn't have that, so everything's fine. Uh, the base here uh, works as a solid foundation for all other parts of the spectrum. So, moving on to the mid-range. It has a very good timbre for the musical instruments, especially guitars. It's very transparent and musical, and it has very, very good and natural vocals. So, that's the uh, trademark of the Asahi Kasei chipset. Uh, 
I had in my collection, and I have in my collection, AK4490, AK4493, AK4493 double, AK4495, and this is the second AK4499 EX uh, digital analog converter that I have. Uh, I got all of them because of these vocals. Yes. <clears throat> the vocals here are star of the show. That's clear. Uh, they are very vibrant and very detailed. Um, yes, now let's move to the treble. The treble is airy and delicate. Uh, some of other reviewers said that uh, the treble is not as airy. In my opinion, with my equipment, it's just fine. Uh, it probably could be better. Uh, it's not as airy and it's not on par uh, with my Gastart. Uh, X26 uh, Pro, but nevertheless, it's very uh, good uh, and it's still transparent. So, so far, only compliments. But now we have to move to detail. And detail, as long as it's good in general, uh, it does lack some fine details uh, that I was able to hear with some other digital to analog converters. And maybe that's the thing that other uh, reviewers um, have in mind when they are saying that uh, this is not as heavy and as transparent as it could be. Uh, it's heavy, it's transparent, but it doesn't have the amount of detail uh, I'm used to expect uh, from that kind of uh, device device and uh, yes what's important here is that i'm reviewing my gear uh, with uh, top of the line martin logan uh, electrostat speakers and i'm reviewing uh, i was reviewing this particular um, digital to analog converter with a set of uh, cambridge audio 851 w uh, monoblock amplifiers so, and with best possible cables, but basically the whole description for the audio chain used in the test uh, will be in the description of the video. But the moral of the story here is that <clears throat> uh, nothing else in my audio chain was bottleneck for this digital to analog converter. So it was able to show all of its qualities. In regular setup with regular dynamic speakers, I guess that some of you guys wouldn't be able to spot the difference in the detail level, but with electrostatic um, speakers, uh, it's uh, apparent. It could be better. Uh, so, mids are detailed, but it seems that the treble, the treble range is lacking some of the fine detail that I'm used to here with other digital to analog converters. Now, Moving on to the scene and imaging. Uh, it's good and precise. It's not spectacular. I mean, uh, I've heard better, but it's absolutely perfectly fine. And this is something that I would expect uh, from the device in this price range. So that's perfectly fine. Uh, everything is where it should be in all three dimensions. So, when it comes to scene and imaging, I like this device. Now moving on to the most, at least for me, uh, interesting area. The area that I like to call loose spots uh, that uh, do not fit in any uh, previously discussed area. Uh, the presentation of this digital to analog converter is very emotional, uh, but it doesn't kick or lock hard, meaning that acoustic music, that uh, vocals, that small ensembles uh, will be very, very good with this one. But uh, live rock concerts uh, or, for example, so uh, some drum percussion music uh, won't be as good as it could be. Uh, it won't make your hair on, the, on your neck uh, raise, uh, but it's very emotional. Uh, also, it's very musical and very melodic, uh, and this is uh, the, the melodic part. Uh, it's able to convey a very small differences 
in rhythmic tempo. So, uh, in some of my music, my some of the music I own, uh, like for example, uh, soundtrack uh, for Saving Private Ryan, uh, the main theme uh, by John Williams, you can clearly hear the differences in the tempo in the brass instruments. And these small nuances make the, this track uh, very beautiful. And uh, this is the area I would say that this digital to analog converter excels. Vocals and melodic sensor for rhythm and pace. Yes. Uh, it doesn't have that bite and uh, it doesn't have very great dynamics uh, for big dynamic swings. Uh, in orchestral soundtracks, it will not kick you in your gut uh, with percussion, but it very nicely follows the changes in the tempo and pace uh, in the songs. That was the second thing after the vocals that I loved here. So, the summary, the summary part here. I love the vocals. I love the rhythm and tempo. I love musicality of this device. Uh, but it's not on par when it comes to detail with other devices I have. Uh, I can hear that with my electrostats, but they are merciless. Uh, with regular dynamic speakers, you'll be pretty fine with this device, and I guess you won't be able to even hear the, the differences that I'm talking about here. So, all in all, I like this device. I think I would be able to use in my in one of my secondary setups. I have to. I absolutely have to check it out with my cane uh, tube amplifier because of these vocals. And with tube amplifiers, the amount of the detail is not the most important thing that you want to have uh, in your setup. So that's the thing I have to do. Uh, but I won't be using this one with my uh, electrostats because Gastart X26 Pro is still better in all areas. But Gastart is like three times the price when bought used uh, compared to this one, this small guy. Uh, I don't think you can buy X26 Pro uh, new uh, at this particular moment, uh, but the, uh, the, the price for that, the regular price would be four times higher than the regular price for this one. So. There's no ground to compare them, but in its price range, it's very good. And if you'll be able to get that on the flash sale for something like $250, then that puts things in completely different perspective. For $250, that's an excellent device. There's, I haven't heard, I haven't heard anything better than this one for $250. So that's it. Uh, as I said, I'll post the links uh, and keeping my fingers crossed uh, for it to be on the sale uh, in the next few days. Uh, yes, and that's basically it. Uh, I'll be returning uh, to my amplifier and pre-amplifier reviews pretty soon. Uh, I'll be on a business trip to London for the next three days, so I'll try to push some smaller and shorter reviews uh, for you guys in the meantime. If you like this review, if it helped you to decide whenever to buy or not to buy and save some money uh, for this device, uh, then you're more than welcome to buy me a beer using Super Thanks uh, on YouTube. So that's all. I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you'll have a great uh, day ahead of you and see you next time. Bye guys.